My name's Ivan Schwab. I'm an ophthalmologist. That's a medical doctor that manages people's eyes, both medically and surgically. The paper that I worked on was uh, essentially about why woodpeckers don't get headaches. The idea really came from my early interest in birds. I've been interested in birds since childhood. I've been interested in natural history since childhood. How do they do this? So when I'm in the field and I see woodpeckers uh, hammering away, it's inevitable they'd say, well, why don't they injure their brain? Or, because I'm an ophthalmologist, why don't they damage their eyes? A large woodpecker will strike a tree 12,000 times a day up to 20 times a second. That's hard to believe. Each strike is approximately a thousand times gravity, a thousand Gs. Now, the Air Force tells me that you can tolerate about 134 Gs before you pass out. It's as if you were to run into a wall at 15 miles an hour, 12,000 times a day, face first that you'd expect its eyeballs to pop out, but they don't. Evolution has given the woodpeckers a lot of adaptations to keep them from getting headaches. So let's start at the front. Woodpeckers have two outer eyelids like we do, but they don't close them very many times during the day. The third eyelid, the inner eyelid, it's like a visor, it's like a pair of safety goggles, it's like a seatbelt. It uh, does all that in combination. And it does that as the first part of the mechanism to keep the eyes in place. Now a little bit to your left again. What I did first was an x-ray so that I could understand more about the skull and particularly the beak. I thought there had to be something in the beak. The newest information I found that I think is important is that the lower beak is much heavier and thicker than the upper one. It then fits to the base of the skull, which is much heavier. Now, where does all that energy go when it hits the base of the skull? Well, it radiates into the muscular system of the shoulders. And if you look when you're in the field, if you look at a woodpecker, as it comes up to a tree and gets ready to hammer, it'll tilt its tail into the tree and it'll brace against the tree so that as it hammers, the energy just cycles right back into the tree and the head doesn't take so much of the force. But there are other features as well to help keep the brain and the head in place. I knew about the bone that was extending from the beak around the head, and that bone extends from the upper beak. It splits, it comes back over the head, over the skull, outside the skull, comes around the lower jaw and inserts into the tongue. That bone, with the muscle and tendons that surround it, can clamp down at the moment of impact. If you think of it as a jousting helmet that the woodpecker wears, this cap tightens down on the head to help keep the brain from being damaged. The Ig Nobel is a, an interesting award. They're meant for people who do research that first makes you smile and then makes you think. I was pleased, I was flattered, but I didn't start this research because of the Ig Nobels. Pure curiosity, pure research, not trying to solve a problem per se, has its own rewards. Curiosity is the key element in science. I don't care so much about the answers. I care mostly about the question. And science is just as simple as asking the right question and seeking its answer. <laughs>